Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and on this episode of In the House, we're going to be talking about annual furnace maintenance. Let's go. In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house. Electrical, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. Each week, I'm joined by a panel of experts. We pick a tip pick a topic and we discuss it in depth. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value. I've got Kevin and Richard back with me today. Uh, they're managers over the HVAC service and install departments at Any Hour Services. Um, are you guys watching any shows right now? Like, I don't know, Netflix. Do you guys stream shows? Do you, do you get into things like that or do you not have time for television? My television consists of like when I'm in bed at night yep. and I'm unwinding. Yep. So same. I'm watching. But do you have shows that you watch? Yeah, I have a couple. Like the one that my wife and I are watching is uh, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. Okay. So that's one. It's been like. Have you a, seen it before? Or like, is no. this a back? She's through? seen it. We're, we've been going on it for like three years because I'll watch like four episodes and I'll get bored and I'll be on something different. Got my it. my favorite one now is a uh, Rust Rust Valley Restores. It's a car show. Uh, just a couple guys up in Canada. Okay. So are you streaming these shows yeah. or are you, okay. I'm streaming. What, what platform are those? Netflix. On? Netflix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kevin, how about you? Do you watch shows? Yeah, we watch shows. This is totally his wife's making him. Well, that, that's his. So it's, it's tricky. Cause you have to find something. Cause I don't go watch TV by myself. Okay. It's, it's we got to watch it together. His Cause we wife is making limit. Him. <laughs> limited time right his wife watches these you got to be careful let, let he, he, get, he gets in trouble <laughs> <laughs> well let me let me tell you so it's kind of a, a guilty like pleasure yes okay we just finished the second season of cobra kai which is <laughs> which is the karate kid series so, yes i actually just started it with my teenager he wanted to watch it and i was like but shouldn't you watch Karate Kid first? He's like, we couldn't find it anywhere streaming for free, and we didn't want to pay the four bucks to like rent it, and so we just started it. That so shows it shows enough. We're like, like two episodes into it. Yeah, it, I, I agree. It was one of those where I I was like, ah, this is gonna be kind of dumb. like, oh, this is better than I thought it would be. I mean, it's super cheesy. <laughs> sure, you know what I mean, yeah. But you know, it's all those movies back in the eighties. That's how they were. Of course, so. of course. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so Cobra Kai, you just finished that. Do you have you? Did you like finish it last night or had, have you started a new uh, show? We finished it two nights ago. Two nights ago. So yeah. what have you started since to fill the gap? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, we don't. Uh, I'll be honest. When it comes to series, to watch a series, it's a commitment. Yeah. Like is. you really like, because I don't like to watch one. So if we're going to watch one, we have to like commit and watch it. I don't know. That sounds stupid. But I'm sure you get what I mean. Um so yeah, no, we haven't. Tell uh, me more. I, I don't. We, we haven't uh, <laughs> haven't found anything. I was ready to commit myself to watching. So you've been okay. Well, then, what are some things that you've decided to avoid? Because like, I mean, you kind of have to watch like the first five ten minutes. Like you go through and you're like, that looks interesting. You start it, and then I usually wait till somebody says, "Hey, there's a series you should watch." Oh, you should check <laughs> it out. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't scroll through. I don't. You don't scroll. Your wife mm -hmm. doesn't go looking. Mm -mm. for things okay well there you go no you, the reason we found cobra kai teenage son Got same it. thing seems like he found it and we were like oh hey the karate kid heck yeah let's watch that you know so i wish those karate kid movies would come out on some uh platform so i could go back i really liked the one where he uh he went to japan and like that is the second one i think it was the second one yeah i think the i think they started going downhill after that yeah Anyway, I don't know. What were we talking about? Mr. Miyagi. We weren't actually, but I did have to look up because I didn't know if he was dead or alive. Like Mr. Miyagi, because I was like the, really the real, hoping. The real guy? Yeah. yeah I was dead. really hoping that, well, I know now. Oh. I was going to get to that. You just ruined the I didn't, I didn't mean to uh, like spoil your. <laughs> for all those that don't know, <laughs> he's gone. But no, I was hoping <laughs> there sorry, was this part of me before loss. I figured out that he was like passed away. I, I was hoping that there'd be like a cameo, like he would like be there or something. Anyway, he walks right. in and he's like, <laughs> starts rubbing his hands together. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, so the podcast, we should probably do that. Um, Real quick, uh, though, before we before we get to the podcast, uh -oh. I just wanted to second Rust Valley Restores because you don't even have to be into cars and that's good. Yeah, it is. And uh, do Mike, what you've been watching? 
What have I been watching? <sighs> well, we just started you the said, Cobra Kai thing. Yeah, I'm going to say you started that one. Yeah. Uh, let me think of other things because we have a couple of different streaming platforms. And honestly, like right now, I've been I've been working so much. I haven't really been able to get into a show, but I I'm a big fan of uh, Mad Men, and I've watched it a few oh, times. Yeah, you've t- said that, and I've wanted to get into it. Damn. Yeah, I've watched it a few times, and so I'll I'll usually if I can't like commit to watching a show i'll have some like favorites that i'll go back because i also i don't usually end up watching a show until like at night when i'm like getting ready to wind down but then i'm usually like so tired i fall asleep pretty easily Mm -hmm. and so i don't usually make it through a full oh no we my wife and oh that's what we did because my wife has been watching it more than me but like we we started gray's anatomy uh so we went back and said (laughs) why are you laughing i just thought of something funny that's all just keep going okay (laughs) Anyway, so we started uh, Grey's Anatomy, and that show has been on the air for so freaking long. And if you there's there's definitely like if you go back to the beginning of it, there was a style that like those shows were shot in, and they'd like have like this music going, and it's just different. And I, I found that I don't love that style at the beginning. Uh, you know, I'm sure it gets better, but. Anyway, so so that's the one that we're watching together because we usually have to have one that we can watch together, and then I will usually have one if she's like off, like visit, hanging out with her friends or talking on the phone or something. I'll have one that I can like do in the background, and I the one that I'm doing on my own right now in the background is actually it's also Netflix, but it's uh, that one called Away, the one where the the lady oh, yeah, is yeah, going yeah. to Mars we or just something like that. that. You did start it. Oh, I, I saw a preview for that one. Yeah, We're two th- episodes in. I think I may. I think I may be a couple episodes into it. But it's one of those where, like, I'll start it and then, like, I I never know how long I've got until my wife's like ready for bed. And then, like, once she gets in bed, she's like, "Just so you know, I'm waiting on you." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> While she's over there, like, looking at her phone and stuff, I'm like, "Well, I'm waiting on you." Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> You satisfied, Austin? Hang on. Have you seen... Uh, oh, okay. This, okay, hang so on. So on this we're, episode of no, In no, the no, House, no, no, we're no, just no. going to talk about shows. Have you seen the kind... <laughs> the, it's called and Rides. You may need to edit that. I don't know. It's, no, it's on Velocity Channel. It's a guy here in Salt Lake. Uh, Ken Diggett Design. They do... Like, their cars are... You're a couple hundred grand for their cars. Wow. Like, they did one that's a million dollars. Wow. They It's a pretty cool place. Uh, That's cool. Uh, let's see. Should we do the, can we do the show now? We ready? Everybody, no, no objections. I'm, I'm ready. I'm sure the listeners are ready for us to I, I actually talking about shows is probably more interesting than talking about yeah, <laughs> the your, stuff we normally talk tuna. about. Um, let's see. So on episode 35, we talked about, uh, furnace maintenance and the things you need to do to get your furnace ready for winter. And at the end of the show, we talked about, um, you know, that manufacturers recommend, that you have some dealer maintenance done or that you have a technician come out. And so we're going to talk about that on this episode. Let's start out with this. What's the difference between the stuff that you do yourself and the stuff that a technician would do? Well, a lot of it is more advanced. It's going to require specialty tools. And then it's going to require a little more in depth of tearing apart and stuff like that, getting into it. Some, some of the stuff is, you know, a homeowner can do, but while we're out there, we're going to go through from A to Z and make sure it's all working properly. Why is it important to have it done and and do you really have to do it every year you want your car to break down on a road trip no okay that's why it's important you don't want your furnace to break in the middle of winter okay but there are people out there that say that like there's and I, it frustrates me when i see these comments on social media like when when i make posts and things and then there's a faction of people out there that are like I was told by a guy that knows what he's talking about. You don't do anything. There's no maintenance that you need to do to your furnace or your air conditioner. This is just a load of crap. I read that post this morning. I wanted to, yeah. (laughs) He's happy if his system breaks down the middle of busy season. Like, that's what it boils down to. If you want your system to be reliable, just get it looked at every year. I mean. Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's so many moving parts and so many things that can happen, right? that uh, the, the whole reason that you do this, there's a few things that it affects. It affects your efficiency and it affects safety, right? And then it also affects your comfort, 
right? Mm -hmm. And so the reason you go get a tune-up is to keep it efficient, keep it safe, keep you comfortable. Here's a here's an analogy I use all the time. Do it. I love your analogies. You, you ever driven cross town on a low tire? I'm sure I have. Did it get you from point A to point B? Yes. Is it going to be? It's going to get you where you need to go. Yep. Is it good for the tire? Uh, no. No. It's going to cause some different wear and tear, and it's going to wear the tire out, right? It's same thing with the furnace or air conditioner. You can have parts that aren't working properly. Sure, it's cooling to a certain degree, but it's going to cause it to break sooner than later, and it's going to be more damage. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, then why why do some people say that there's like, like if it's that obvious? Because to me, it's obvious. You know, any large piece of equipment that you have, if you do the maintenance on it, it's going to help it run better and last longer. Why would someone even lead someone to believe that there's nothing that you need to do except change your filter? He did admit that. He's like, all you got to do is change your filter. Usually when you have people that are making those kinds of claims, they just don't know. You know, maybe they're in the industry, maybe what they've done. There's different aspects in the HVAC world. You know, maybe he's uh, just primarily doing new construction type stuff and he's not into service and all that type of thing. I mean, you don't know, uh, could be something like that, but it really boils down to just, you, you don't understand how these things work. If mm -hmm. that's what your stance is, you don't understand how they work. Yeah, if you don't want to get it looked at, then don't get it looked at. Will it, will it function from year to year without a tune up? Probably. It'll probably like, like Richard was saying, it'll probably run. It'll probably turn on. I, I relate it whenever I'm explaining this on radio and stuff, I usually will explain it like an oil change, you know? They, the, there's data that shows you should get your oil changed this often, right? And so, you know, if you, so you should get your oil changed every three to 5,000 miles. If you do not get your oil changed, will your car keep running? Yes. Can you skip two oil changes and have it keep running? Yes. Like the effects between skipping that oil change aren't usually going to be super noticeable. What you're doing though is you're not going to notice the negative effects usually until the end of the life. You could be shortening the life of that furnace or air conditioner, you know, by years by neglecting the maintenance up front because you go and you get a new car, man, that thing runs really good. Mm -hmm. You can blow right past a couple of oil changes and it still feels like it's doing good. But you know, it's the difference in the thing lasting your furnace or air conditioner lasting 20 years versus 13 years. That's expensive. Yeah. So, let well let's let's dive into let's talk about um i mean we can't speak well i guess actually we do have a story about what, <laughs> what another company did for their uh their little maintenance that they did on a furnace and we'll, we'll go into that later but um let's talk about what we do and what someone should expect with that annual service annual service we call it a tune-up tune-up is just the term that we use to describe the manufacturer's recommended maintenance and inspection items that you should have done uh annually so richard you you manage our tune-up department because we have a department of how many tune-up guys do you have uh, i think we have 15 now we just hired two new technicians so, so we've got a department that all they do is run tune-ups day in and day out year round Obviously, in the summer, they're running air conditioner tune-ups. In the winter, they're running furnace tune-ups. And then on the shoulder seasons, they're doing both type of thing. But that is the good thing about uh, the this maintenance is that manufacturers don't specify that you have to do it at the beginning, middle, or end of the season. They just say, hey, get the thing done, right? And so, but let's talk about the tune-up and what's included in it. And as you're going through, because we have a systemized checklist, right? Yes. So as you're going through that, I'm just as a homeowner or just as being curious, I might stop you and say, why is that important? Or you can elaborate as much as you want. Kevin, if you want to take a nap, you know, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> really? I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I know Kevin well enough. That ain't going to happen. I don't know. I've seen him in some meetings before. Okay. Well now yeah, he's yeah. not talking. If he's not talking and it doesn't pertain to him. It's how I listen. Snoring. Maybe actually, Okay, speaking of shows, I'll be laying there, and I don't know if I, well, I do know I'm fat, but I, I don't know if it's just because, like, I'm breathing different, but, like, I am wide awake most of the time, and my wife will lean over to me, and she's like, why are you snoring? Are you falling asleep? I'm like, I'm, I'm awake, 
And so I don't know if like, you know, fat Mike laying down like <laughs> breathes in a way that sounds like he's snoring. But anyway, so I, I was going to say like, you're awake snoring, but then I was like, I'm awake snoring sometimes. <laughs> so no Good. judgment. I'm, I'm glad we have something in common. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Richard, take it away. So we have a checklist we're going to go through. And first thing that we're going to start off, we're just going to check the thermostat. And when I say check the thermostat, we're going to make sure all the wiring's tight, make sure it's not touching and stuff like that. Make sure the batteries are good in the thermostat. It doesn't say low battery. Uh, it's level and things like that. Some of the thermostats do matter if they're level, some don't. But cosmetically, it always looks better when it's level. Okay. So we want to check the thermostat and just make sure it's good to go, no issues there, missing buttons, stuff like that. So that's one thing that we start off. And the reason we like to start off that is because that's kind of the first thing that happens in a system is your thermostat says, hey, it's too hot in the house or it's too cold. So we just like start from there. We're gonna make sure your furnace or, air, or your furnace, because once we're talking about furnaces, we're gonna make sure it actually starts up. That's a big thing is like, hey, you know, we're out here, let's make sure it actually starts up. There's not something more involved. Cause like you said, if it's something that's not starting up, we have a tune up department, we have a service department. The de service department is more dedicated to broken systems that aren't working. You know, that's the one thing that, so we wanna make sure it's actually starting up and turning on. Well, there's another important part to starting it up as well also, and that's that in order to test some of the things, doesn't it need to yes. kind of run yeah, or we, be running or something? I, I really love the phone calls that, hey, we want to do a tune-up on our furnace, yet the gas company hasn't unlocked the gas meter yet. We're, we're not going to be able to do that tune-up. So Got it. That, that might be something if you're calling for, if you moved in the house, make sure your uh, gas is onto your home. <laughs> so that might be something. Okay. I thought Kevin was going to say something. I'm sorry. Maybe he's just snoring over there. Uh, we talked about last episode. Just make sure that there's nothing around the, the furnace. Make sure it's, you know, we're going to check and make sure everything's for you. Make sure all the surrounding area is clean for the combustion air and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to go through the ignition system. Make sure it's working properly and it's safe. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about, you know, make sure there's not any explosions or rollouts and the flames burning backwards. We're going to test the igniter at this point. Actually, I make sure, yeah. Make sure the igniter's working properly. It's getting to the right temperature. Uh, there's some electrical meet readings that we're going to be testing. Make sure that that igniter is within the manufacturer's range. That's one of those parts that, sure, it's turning on. However, it may be at the end of its life, and it's showing signs that, hey, this is going to fail sooner than later. So we're going to test it and make sure that it's within those ranges. So that's something. Okay. Uh, we're going to make sure that there's not any condensation damage from some leaks or some cracked hoses or something like that. And it's going to cause some damage to furnace control board or anything like that. Cause we don't want to, you know, we want to catch those problems before they become an issue. So we'll check for condensation damage. Here's where we talked about the igniter ohm reading where you can make sure that that's reading where it's supposed to be. We do get those where it's like, Hey, you know, here's the range. It's higher than there still working. You're, you're, you know, that flat tire. Hey, you got a little bit of a flat tire here where it's going to break. Yeah, it's it's just an indicator that, hey, this is not going to last much longer. Yeah. You know, because those do. Is there a range? Um, is it a standard range? Like every no. igniter should be within a range? Or is it different per igniter, per brand? Like what what do you? Mostly it's different brand is going to be your different ones. Lennox has a, you know, their range. Train has theirs. And then they change models. And then a that igniter is going to be, so there's, there's a lot of different ranges. And are, are those ranges listed on the, um, the sticker that's on the board? Is no. that where they check? Or do you guys just have to know these things? We have a list of them. Yeah. Got it. So we know those. Gotcha. So we check, check for that. Um, check for combustion air. Make sure those big pipes that you going from the outside, they're bringing that cold air in. Make sure they're not blocked. Want to make sure it's going to draft, going to be burning clean. Is, do do they do any type of like uh, measuring to make like check what the combustion air should be for that unit and make sure that it's like the combustion air is sized properly for? Yeah, uh, that. yeah, they'll double check and make sure. Hey, this is up to code per BTUs on the size of the furnace and water heater in the opening. Yeah, okay, we'll make sure that that's sized properly. Uh, there's a lot of safety controls on the newer furnaces, and the more more and more higher efficiency there's more and more sensors but we're going to make sure those sensors some of those are for safety features gas um, carbon dioxide temperatures there's a lot of those we'll make sure those are working properly because those do fail so if there was a problem with your furnace sometimes they won't fail i mean we go to we see them sometimes where they've been uh we call it jumpered where they've just been bypassed and that's a big problem 
We're going to make sure those are not Meaning jumping. somebody went out there, mm. found that there was a sensor or safety switch not working, and they just bypassed it so that it would continue the mm-hmm. function. Mm-hmm. Rather than fixing the problem, they just said, hey, let's get rid of this safety sensor. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, that sounds like a... Sounds like the same guy that says you don't need to do maintenance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just bypass that. Sure oh, you don't need to replace that. I can make it work without it. And we've had we've had instances where we've had fires because of it. Like I said, and it's depending on the sensors, so don't get caught up on that. But sure. let's just make sure we're not jump ring sensors. They're important. They're there for a reason. Okay. All right. I lost my number. What number are we at? Here we are. Ten. No. No. Nine. 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 We're going to measure the transformer. It's what call it. It just gives you the 24, the low voltage. Make sure it's sending the proper voltage to the thermostat and throughout all the sensors. Those can fail. It's not typically the transformers don't typically fail. So we're just going to check make sure. It could be a loose wire or something like that. We'll check those wirings and stuff like that. The burner assembly, we'll make sure those are nice and clean. Uh, we talked about in the last episode crossovers, making sure the flames are lighting each other properly. If there's any delay, we'll find out why and see. And if there's you know, dirty and stuff like that, we'll take a look at that. You actually clean those as part of the yes. service, don't you? Yeah. Yep. Now, if it's something we need to really tear it apart completely and, you know, more in depth, we may have the conversation, you know, a little bit of a fee there, depending on what it is. So if it's just something we can get into, yeah. But yeah, either way, those need to be taken care of. Uh, Inspect the furnace flame for proper burn. It's just kind of like we said, make sure it's looking good. It's not like a really orange color. Make sure it's burning clean. It's not getting too much air, not enough air, kind of things like that. Make sure it's got a good clean burn. Uh... Let's see, what's the next? Number 12, flue pipe evaluation. If it's an 80% or 90%, just make sure it's up to code. It's venting or sloped the correct way. It's not sloping backwards and getting carbon dioxide in your home and stuff like that and draining and stuff. Making sure all the joints are tight. There's no leaks and stuff like that. Uh, We're going to test the capacitor. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. The flame sensor, that's what we talked about. It has a reading. They're different depending on most of them are within a 2 to 5 range, but... There are some different ones. We're going to test it, make sure it's reading within the range. If it's not within that range, we're going to recommend replacing it. So rather than just cleaning it, because we want to make sure, you know, we offer a warranty on it. We want a nice new part. Anytime we're dealing with a sensor, we don't want to try to band-aid it. We want to make sure it's working properly. We do see those get lower than they're supposed to be. And what you'll see on that is a lot of times the flames will turn on for a couple seconds and they'll turn off. And they'll turn on again and when it tries again, that's a good indication that flame sensor has failed either dirty or another underlying issue. Uh, Let's see, capacitor. That's what kind of gets your blower motor up and going, kind of like a battery for a little, not real too in depth, but those have a range as well. Typically they're plus or minus 6%. If they're below that range, we want to get that because that can cause wear and tear on your blower motor. And that's the last thing we want to do is add extra stress on there. If we do, if you do have a lot of extra stress on a blower, it's going to fail kind of like we talked about earlier hey let's get these problems fixed now it might be a smaller part rather than replacing a blower and that's a big you know operation that's a big chunk of your furnace Hmm. so we're going to make sure that the gas manifold pressure is adjusted properly here in utah with our altitude we need to make that adjustment and that's just a fuel to air ratio making sure that's all adjusted properly so is that a a test that's run to see if it's adjusted properly or are there like uh, settings like dip switches or like how, how do you there are furnaces with dip switches some of the higher end stuff or on the like carrier has a you know an adjustment on the thermostat for altitude but it's a it's a meter that's a special meter that we hook up to the gas and it shows us and then the owner's manual tells us where we're supposed to be at with that reading and it's it tells you where you're at per altitude and yes. then you yeah. adjust open or close to let more or less out is that is that essentially what you're doing is yeah. letting more or less gas typically out typically it's less got it yeah we have to back it down is typically what we do a lot of furnaces come with 3.5 i know that's some numbers that don't really mean a lot typically around 3.2 to 2.8 depending mm-hmm. on the furnace manufacturer and the efficiency and stuff like that so that's the most commonly word is green sticker gotcha. that's basically what we're doing at that point is doing a gas adjustment for the green sticker. <clears throat> and you do that as part of the, um, the tune up, yes. the maintenance. Yep. That so is you, do you have to do the green sticker every year or does it get out of whack? It shouldn't get out of whack. No, Once but you just verify it, that it's yeah. when you verify it, do you have to like re 
put a new sticker on certifying that that's when it was last tested or I, I tell my guys yes to go ahead and put a new one on just okay. to make sure that hey you know this was updated and checked and verified it's more just like when your oils changed they throw a little sticker on there say it's been changed recently it's not giving you a date the next time it needs but it says hey it has been checked and it is still good gotcha just more of a reassurance than anything okay Blower motor, we're gonna test the voltage there at amps, make sure it's getting the proper amps, and that just kind of gives us an indication. If we have a motor that's failing, it's gonna give us a reading of outside of what the manufacturer recommends, a higher or lower, so typically higher. Kevin's over there taking a nap. You haven't let him talk mm. enough. I'm, I thought you, he was gonna stop me. Well, maybe try to engage him. Kevin, what do you think of that blower motor amps? Hmm? <laughs> Wow. They they definitely have amps. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Kevin I know from I, meetings. I thought this was I thought this was the, the Richard the Richard tune up special. No, 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 no. I told you I was gonna fly through this and you're supposed to stop me. Oh. All right. So. I'll stop you. Amps that can tell us if a furnace blower motor a lot of times and we can't catch everything. You know, it's sometimes just parts just break. So you're saying typically it is drawing too many amps? Yes. If it's failing, yeah. We'll see a high amp reading. Mm -hmm. So you're using more electricity than you need to. Yep. And, okay. Yep. The blower's working harder to start or run. And there's no, there's no adjustments or th like, is it drawing more amps than it needs to? We talked about, you know, it's, um, uh, could be overheating from the dust and things, not pulling air into the windings. There could be, um, you know, stuff building up on the, the fans or the fins mm -hmm. of the blower wheel. Did those things affect it's yes so is there any type of like cleaning that you're doing when you when you find those or is it just like hey buy a new motor no it depends on what it is if we have to tear into the system that's going to be something extra because uh, that's going to be largely involved we have to pull blower motor into the blower wheel not the squirrel cage mike the blower wheel uh, we're going to make that nice and clean. I mean, your ductwork could be an issue, but we'll do all those testing and we'll get to the ductwork here in a minute, but gotcha. we will do these additional testing to make sure that, Hey, it is indeed the motor or it is something else. Gotcha. So we will find that out. Uh, let's see here. What number are we at now, Kevin? 17. He doesn't know. I know. That's why I'm putting <laughs> Seven, him on the spot. 17. Oh, thanks Kevin. <laughs> the inducer motor. We're going to check the amps there. The inducer motor is the exhaust motor. So it's just making sure it's working properly. We don't want that to fail. That'll shut your furnace down. Okay. It'll give us a rating of where it should be and where we're actually at. We're going to make sure all the electrical components, all the wire nuts and all the screws and everything are tight. You get a loose electrical connection. It can cause your furnace not to operate. We want to make sure to get those nice and tight. That's one of the reasons we test the thermostat. Check those wirings as well. Uh, let's see. Number 19. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. We're going to go through the heat exchanger. And we're going to make sure it doesn't have any rust or corrosion or any breaches. That's a, that's a one that you get a lot of. That one's a tricky one because we're going to, we're going to pull that in out, not the heat exchanger, but we're going to get in there. We're going to maybe pull the blower motor, take a visual inspection, go through the coil and stuff like that. We have cameras and stuff like that. Ultimately what we're finding we're looking for is just making sure that it's not a pro it's not a danger. Making sure it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Like make sure that you're not risking yourself and potentially getting carbon dioxide in your home the, the tricky thing you know you talk about a cracked heat exchanger because that's essentially, essentially what we're talking about mm -hmm. and a lot of homeowners have heard that term a cracked heat exchanger and usually it's like oh no you know because nobody understands what it is exactly yeah. um, but the fact of the matter is uh, you need someone who's trained to come out and take a look at it um, because there there's a real danger there you know um, just because it's cracked does that mean that it's killing you as you run it no but there is just so much potential for harm. And that's why the American Gas Association and uh, all, you know, the other national gas uh, organizations, they have said if it's, if it's got a crack or a breach, you know, that's, that's enough. It, it's got to be repaired or replaced, right? Can you repair a heat exchanger? Would the, you have to pull it out and weld it? No, or I think what they mean by repair is replace the heat the exchanger. The heat exchanger itself, oh, gotcha. yeah. Um, so I, I have seen people try to repair with JB Weld. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it was. Well, I was thinking real weld, but uh, like, uh, okay. So let's let's talk about because it is, it's one of those things where you never want to, uh, a customer never wants to have somebody come out and try and use a scare tactic on them. You you hear about 
quote unquote stings, you know, uh, you know, and, and trying to get catch HVAC companies like using that as an excuse to try and get them to, uh, you know, replace their system. But we go through um, a lot of steps before we try and say like before we condemn the heat exchanger essentially right like we have a form you've got one there behind your tune-up sheet so like walk walk me through all of the steps that we go through like how how much precaution we take so that we're not trying to you know scare somebody in like what do we do to verify that that's the case like walk me through that whole cracked heat exchanger process because i think people get worried about somebody coming in and saying I found a crack, I'm gonna, you know, I can't turn your system back on. So walk me through this. Well, one thing that we're doing during this tune-up is we're not looking for a crack. We're not trying, we don't want to find one ultimately, but we want your home safe. That's what we're trying to do. We're gonna make sure your furnace is operating properly and it's safe because that's what you want us to do. Well, our process is we're gonna check it, we're gonna test it, we're gonna verify everything. And by doing that, we're gonna take some carbon dioxide readings. Okay. Go, go ahead and finish. And I was going to ask you to like explain to me how you check it. Like okay. I, I want to hear like the, the so process on this form that we have here. You know, it's going to ask. We have what's the reading at the furnace? Like, are we getting carbon monoxide there at the furnace? You know, and then it, next step is, are we going to take it at the supply vent? The air coming out of the furnace is there carbon monoxide there? Same with the return. Are we getting any in the return? We're going to take pictures, and that's a big one with us. Uh, we take a lot of pictures because we like to have you know verification, and we do have some other. We have an app that kind of tells us, hey, here's the picture, here's where it's taken, so you know that it's not taken. Date and stamp yes. times and all that yeah. stuff. So it's not, hey, this was taken, you know, uh, online or anything like that. Once you, know. you get a good picture of a crack, yeah. you use that on every job, right? Yeah, right. No, we, we do get those, and it's really frustrating because we're not trying to take advantage. It's like, hey, here's what it is. But we do have a, an app that we use, that, and all those, those uh, pictures get emailed to myself. And then, so we have them in the files. So if a customer's like, hey, can I get this picture? We have it. You know, we want to have documentation. Uh, so there's the pictures. We're going to just go over with the customer. Hey, here's where the situation. We've, you know, come across a cracked heat exchanger. It's unsafe for you and your family. Uh, so, okay, so walk real quick, walk me back. How are they looking at it? Do they have camera equipment? Are they just like, I've seen some guys pull the blower motor and crawl up into the furnace. Like how are they inspecting this there's there's different ways however you need to get into there to verify it is what's going to happen now there's different ways you can pull the blower and go from underneath now if it's a high efficient furnace there's going to be a secondary heat exchanger you're not going to be able to inspect but you'll need to inspect the secondary heat exchangers we can pull the heat exchangers on some furnaces which aren't real bad um there's a couple brands that are real easy to pull you really know, 15 minutes you can have them out another 10 15 minutes they're back in huh. uh, i personally have uninstalled a furnace and reinstalled it in about a half hour total. Wow. Because it was really a simple, easy install. Uh, we had a verification and I wanted to double check. I wasn't quite sure. We couldn't quite get into there to get a picture. And just to really make sure, because I don't want to say, well, it looks like one or I'm not sure. We wanted to know. So we uninstalled the furnace, got into it, verified that it was indeed a crack. And then you could see it right there. And then we put the furnace back in, gave them the option and let them, uh, we replace that furnace. Okay. So. But going through the coil, you can go in there. Cameras, cameras are a good thing, depending on that. Some of the cameras aren't as high quality. You want to make sure the ones are high quality. So it's depending on what way you need to get in there and verify it. Some of the heat exchangers are really close. You can't get a mirror or anything like that. You'll need a camera. Gotcha. So we have all those tools, whatever we need, on, depending on the furnace. We will so do you, do you first check uh, the carbon monoxide readings? And then if you are getting readings, then you start looking for what's causing that no we're going to do a carbon monoxide reading regardless and we're going to do an inspection regardless got it so you can like kevin was saying earlier you know just because <coughs> it has a crack or a breach doesn't mean you're getting carbon monoxide in your home gotcha. it just means there's a risk so it. it doesn't matter if it is or isn't we're going to do a full evaluation a thorough job making sure it's there yeah at the end of the day crack or no crack the important thing is are you getting carbon monoxide yeah. in the house? Yeah. yeah. What were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, one of the big things that we talked earlier, uh, last episode, it seems like last episode, you hear me better now? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. You don't have to lean toward, you can pull the mic towards you if yeah, you want. I, I got this. I got this. I understand when you're sitting there sleeping, you, you, you like don't want to be too close and like get I, the mic. It was a late night. It was. Um, <laughs> Watching Cobra Kai. <laughs> Cobra Kai. 
<laughs> no, that was two nights ago. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> what, did, what did you say you started? I don't even remember. I don't now. either. Okay, just keep um, going. <laughs> so anyway, you know, you you have these breaches, and we talked in an earlier episode about um, how easy it is for something to be off, and it can be as simple as lint getting over the venturi where your air mixture happens to where carbon monoxide can then be created, mm -hmm. right? And so if you have a breach and then that's happened, which is a very real scenario, well, now it's getting through. And so it's just the very real potential for stuff to happen. Gotcha. All right. So, so you got this, uh, they, if they find a crack or think they found a crack, they go through the process. How is there any double verification? How, what do we do? So our process is we like to get a second, second uh, view on there. So we like to have one of our supervisors come out and do the same process get into the furnace, verify that there's a crack with the homeowner because we want to show you where it's at, you know, so you don't just say, hey, you know, did you take this picture down the road? We want you to see it with your own eyes um, just to make sure it's there. We do have a second opinion where we come back out with another supervisor and just verify it's there. Gotcha. So we do have that. And we have a form here. We just kind of want to leave it with you and just say, hey, here's the information. Here's what American Gas Association says. What are the, what are the rules? I've heard people say, if I think I see a crack, I shut the furnace. I won't turn the furnace back on. Like, talk to me. Talk me through, like the scenarios where that happens, or, or should that happen? Like, what what's going on there? If our policy is, if we come across a furnace that has a cracked heat exchanger, we just simply turn the power off to the furnace, and we won't do anything else to disable your furnace. And if you want to turn it on, that's on you. It's up to you. We don't think it's safe. We would not do it. Uh, Dominion Energy, if they were to come out on that and take a look at that, they would actually shut your gas off and tag it as a, what they call red tag. They would shut your convert furnace down. Now, is it if we find a crack or is it if we find a crack in conjunction with carbon monoxide measurements? If you find a crack. So right. Really? So yeah. if you find a crack and don't even have a reading, you'll, yeah. you'll shut the power so off. So the American Gas Association, their book says any visible crack or hole discovered in this step during the inspection is where to, is reason for requiring placement of the heat exchanger. Mm. So that's where we get into you. You can repair and replace the heat exchanger, and that's a large investment to take. You know, a furnace that could be twenty years old, it could be three years old. Uh, it just depends. I my, the I've seen a three year old furnace with ginormous holes in the heat exchanger because the gas pressure we talked about earlier was burning way too hot. It literally had burned a hole through them. Mm. So yeah. That's, hey, but can I just throw this out? Yep. It was functioning, right? Yeah, it was functioning. Oh, so, so you know, tune-up kind of saved some lives maybe, right? Yeah. Even though it was only three years old? Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think he's re regarding your earlier Go, Going comment back to your post. first comment about the guy, hey, it doesn't need, you don't need to just change your filter. And blah, 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 blah. Oh. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, this, this one was a yeah, three-year-old furnace. Hmm. So just burning too hot. That's one of the reasons. Had they inspected it and done the proper adjustment, it would have never done that. You know, that's another question that we get is like, you know, you, you think about, I just got a new car. Like you can blow through those oil changes. You know, I don't need to get the maintenance done. People are like, well, I have a new one. Do I really need to get the, the maintenance done on it? How bad can the thing be? And I always say, once you go through, it should be set up properly. So once you go through a season, like you need to get the thing. If it was installed last year or last winter and it went through a winter, you need to have it done right now. You know, I was at a training once that, uh, this kind of off topic, but I'm gonna tell a story anyways. Okay. Customer, oil we don't usually go off topic okay. on the show. So Perfect. this will be a first then. So put on the calendar. Be patient listeners. <laughs> I was at a training and the, and the trainer was telling a story how every time he went to this customer's house, cause they would go back and do a uh, maintenance on it. This out of state. He says, every time he went there, the lady had a new car and he finally asked her, he's like, every time I come here, you have a new car. Like she's like, I hate getting my oil changed. When I need a new oil change, I just trade the car in. <laughs> you should see Mike's eyes. He is lit up right now. Yeah. She just gets a new car rather than I sitting around. would love to have that kind of money. Yeah. Wow. So he said it, once a year, she'd get a new car. She would not get her oil change. She would just trade it in. Okay. <laughs> when you talk about oil changes and furnaces, you like, know what? Good, story comes good for mind. her. Yep. Somebody made some choices right to be able to like go. Like we... We common folk think that's ridiculous, but for her, it's like, no, I just, just need a new car. <laughs> Doesn't affect her life at all. That'd be nice. Except that she gets a new car. 
We do have a double verification. Austin knows how that is. I see you roll up all the... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Austin has a new vehicle every week. Right? He's like, I don't know. The, the, the blinker fluid ran low. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Uh, Sidetrack. Where we were, we okay? So that's what happens with the heat exchanger. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So we just want to make sure it's safe. Of ultimately. course, yeah. Regardless, if it's putting carbon monoxide or off or not. If it has a crack, we want to address the issue. Mm, okay. So that's not something we like to do. Um, with one of my technicians comes out and they do say, hey, you know, we did come across one. Just ask them for the picture. So we're happy to share that with you. Not a problem at all. It happens that you get. They want to get us. The homeowner wants to get a second mm-hmm. opinion, and somebody comes out and they're like, "You don't have a crack, or you 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 don't have a problem." Like, how come there's not a standard, like, process to inspect the things so that, like, again, like, I just don't, I don't understand how, like, you can have a crack, and another guy, like, comes and says, "No, there's not." You, you legit could have. 10 people look at the same furnace and three of them find the crack and the other seven not. And it really goes back to training. You know, if you, if you're in there and you don't know what you're looking for, you don't know where to look. I mean, each style of heat exchanger has its stress points Mm. and they're, they're different, you know? And so to know where to look, to know how to get in there and everything else, it really goes back to training. Um, the people that I found technicians I've found that say, well, I've been doing this for however many years and I've only ever seen two cracks. You know what I mean? Usually because they just don't know where to look. They don't know how to look. Mm. Um, you're, you're taking metal, you're heating it and cooling it and heating it and cooling it. Expansion, contraction. These things crack. Now, there's a lot of really good engineering that goes into them, right, that, uh, that uh, tries to help them last for as long as they can. And that's why it's so important to have the right kind of install so that your airflow is working right and that the gas is set right and everything else. It all plays a part into that heat exchanger not cracking. Uh, a lot of warrant, or, uh, manufacturers will have longer warranties on their heat exchanger based upon whether or not it was installed properly, hmm. right? You get one where they say, oh, lifetime warranty based on if it was installed properly, your 25 year, whatever it is, you know? But that's what you run into is people who just, they just haven't had the proper training. Hmm. Not that they're trying to be dishonest or whatever else. They just don't know. I think it also gets to, sometimes it's a lot of work to get in there and inspect these heat exchangers. And someone else may not want to do that and take the time and just kind of give a quick once over and say, no, it's not correct because they don't like another company or they want to be the, the nice guy and the good guy because everyone wants to be the hero, right? And that's what it comes down to sometimes as well. Mm. So, All right. Well, keep going. I was just thinking that, that one that I was three years old that had a burn, that was like December of 2016 that I did that one. I remember mm. it because it was Christmas time and New Year's and they didn't have one in stock. So we had to wait for like a week for them to get in stock for Christmas time. Wow. So luckily the guy was really nice. Everything seems to be like waiting on stock right now. Yeah, no kidding. Ugh. So the heat exchangers, that's our form. That's our process. Okay. Uh, we're just going to make sure it's there. We're going to have documentation because we want to, we don't want you to just take our word for it. We're going to be able to, you know, show it to you and say, hey, you know, it is valid. Here we go. So that's one of the big steps of the furnace tune-up we're going to be doing on the safety inspection as well. Okay. All right, where are we at, Kevin? What number? 20. Nice. So we talked about that one a little bit. Any cracks or holes visible in the primary or secondary heat exchanger, kind of same thing. Just making sure there's not any holes or cracks. It's kind of the same thing there. The secondary one on that one. Uh, 21, inspect, make minor adjustments to blower housing if needed. Some of the furnaces need adjustments uh, to where the screws are set. They didn't get put in properly. Uh, What is the blower housing? It's where the whole blower and the blower wheel attaches to the furnace. Uh, isn't it usually on like a track? Yeah, it's yeah. the case that holds it all, and it does. It slides in and out. Okay. Some of those tracks, though, they have like they just have like a couple of them that line it up, and sometimes they can get put into where they're not. They didn't slide into the last slot, mm. but the last two. I've seen where they don't get lined up properly, and they cause turbulence, and then actually bring water back down from the coil. So mm. I've seen some rusted up ones because of the turbulence creates some issue. Gotcha. So we're going to make sure that's input put in properly. Now you say it's creating turbulence. And when I think of turbulence, I think of like rough air. But when you say turbulence, is it creating rough air or is it just shaking the thing? It's just getting air. It's hit going up and hitting a metal plate oh. and it's coming back oh, down so into it the lower. Yeah. Okay. So it can cause a vibration. Huh? Boom. So we're going to make sure that's adjusted properly. We're going to make sure the blower is also set to the proper speed. 
So with your your furnace, it has different speed. Most most blower motors have different speed taps. We're going to make sure that's on the proper speed for you. And uh, if it's not, do you adjust it? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, those are just a simple little easy thing that would take us real quick, just knowing what we do. Uh, test for natural gas leaks. That's where I think was it this episode or last episode we talked about that electronic leak detectors. La- I know we did on the last, last one. one. Okay. But, yeah. So we have uh, electronic meters. We're going to make sure there's no gas leaks. We're going to test all the joints there. Make sure in the mechanic room in your home that we don't have gas in your home. Is what is the technical term for that meter? Is it just an electronic gas leak, leak detector? Because I I hear guys call them a sniffer. Yeah, electronic sniffer. That's the uh, formal name sniffer that's the formal kind of like squirrel cages for them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you guys in your shorthand <laughs> whatever works yeah, yeah. i guess uh, sniffer so we're gonna we're gonna use our sniffer and not our just our nose sniffer we're gonna use our electronic yeah i think if you say i'm gonna go down there i'm gonna use my sniffer like <laughs> there's a lot of growing up there's a lot of people like use your sniffer <laughs> it's an esd electronic sniffer device <laughs> that's what kevin uses <laughs> okay keep going uh, we're going to check, make sure there's no gas leaks in your home. So that's safe. Uh, I keep losing my spot here. 23. Uh, inspect the gas shutoff and connections for code, different codes. Uh, we're going to make sure that gas valve, the code, the shutoff, they like the ones where you, there's different shutoffs. Some are rated for get water, some are rated for gas. We're going to make sure it's the right one. But they also want them where you can turn them by hand. Some of the older ones, you need a wrench to cl- turn it off. So if you ever smelt gas, you can't turn it off real quick. You're going to have to track down a wrench. So we want ones that are real easy with the hands. So if you ever smell gas, you can real quickly turn it off. Um, so we'll make sure that that's up to code there. This is where we talked about earlier about cleaning the vents. We're going to clean your upper and lower vents. This is what's going to be where your combustion air comes in on your furnace. Make sure that's getting the proper air. It's not blocked off. Are you talking about the louvers on the yes. door? Yep. Got it. So those are going to be cleaned. Make sure because if, like Kevin was saying, in the laundry room, Lint gets built up there and really can narrow those down. It's going to affect your your air intake and the efficiency and the burning and stuff like that. And so it cause some issues there. Uh, clean up uh, lower vents. Oh, that, sorry. Furnace exterior. We're going to make sure it's nice and clean. You know, just make it look good as well. Not, you know, your house, we want to take care of it. Clean it up a little bit for you. That's something just a little kind of nicer to have. Uh, let's see. Carbon monoxide, we have uh, electronic sniffers as well. Is it so, the same sniffer or a different one? So the some of the or guys- Or are there different settings? Uh, mine's not a sniffer, mine's a detector. Oh, oh. detector, there you go. Um, they do make, so the one I have, it does have two different sensors. So it has one on the back and it has a little hose on it. One does gas, one does carbon monoxide. So I can use the same meter for both, but it is going through two different sensors. And then my screen is split so I can see gas and carbon monoxide. Gotcha. So it's not the same sensor but it is the same device on ours. Some of my guys have two different ones. Uh, as long as they're listed and rated, we're good with that. Gotcha. Uh, car, let's see. 27. Sorry, I keep getting lost. Uh, plug in carbon monoxide alarms. If you have a, have one, we're actually going to take a look at it. Some of the date codes on there. Carbon monoxide detectors, they do have a date code on there. Uh, seven years is typically their life of them. So if it's older than seven years, we're going to give, you know, suggest replacing. Now they say that smoke detectors is 10. Uh, so if you have a CO and smoke detector, does that drop the, the life of the smoke? To, it would, to you'd seven? have to look at the sensor, what it says on the, the manufacturer recommends. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there was one, I got called out one night actually on an emergency a couple of years ago where the carbon monoxide detector was going off. And so I ended up pulling the date code on there, pulled out the manual and it literally says, once this date code expires, an alarm will go off. Hmm. So it was kind of a different one, but yeah. So that that was all it was. We searched and no carbon monoxide at home. It was just the detector was faulting. Gotcha. Uh, filters, we're going to make sure the filter size is properly. We're also going to make sure it's sealing off good. What we see a lot of times is an improper filter size, and it's allowing a lot of dirt and debris bypassing the filter, and it's causing the, f- the furnace and the coil to get dirtier than it should be. We want to make sure it's doing its job. Uh, let's see, max temp rise. Furnaces are rated to add so much heat. Does that make sense? So if like your house is 70 degrees, they may be a 60 degrees rise or something like that. So Mm -hmm. we want to make sure if it's over that, your furnace is overheating. And that's where Kevin talks about, you know, 
it can cause damage to the heat exchanger, add extra wear and tear on there. It means it's not working like it should and there's a problem. Is that is that similar to like uh, the temperature split? Like how are you measuring yes. that? Yes. Yep. Temperature. What's the incoming and what's the outgoing? So you do from the return and the supply yep. side. And mm-hmm. now on the on the air conditioner, it was 18 to 22 degrees. What What's the measure for furnace? There are different your C40, depends, 60. Yeah, depends on your model. Depends on the That will the be brand. on the name plate. That's on the name yes. plate? Yep. Okay. Good to yeah, know. Yeah, so we'll see that. Max temperize is what it says. Minimum temperize. Okay. You'll see that on there. Uh, inspect humidifier for operation. If you have a humidifier, we're going to double check, make sure it's ready to go for the winter. Check your pad, check the voltage, make sure the water's on, make sure it's wired properly, uh, test it, turn it on, make sure the drain's clear, things like that. So when you, cause this is something that came up, I think it came up in the last episode with humidifiers is that I always thought you had to go and, uh, turn the humidistat off and on, uh, for the season. But you were saying that if it's wired up properly, um, when it's in air conditioner mode, it cuts voltage to the humidifier. So it should not be adding humidity anyway. And you're saying that your guys go through and they test to make sure that that is wired up properly. Yes. Cool. Yep. They'll make sure it's wired the way it should be. Make sure that also goes along lines of we're tightening all the wires. Mm-hmm. They'll make sure it's checked. It's wired properly and they're not loose connections and they'll start it up for you. Awesome. So if they got a bypass damper and you need to open or close, we'll go ahead and open it or close it or open it during the winter time. And then summertime, we'll go ahead and close it for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Gotcha. Uh, check for ducting. Check ducting for obvious air leaks. We're just going to make sure you're not losing a lot of air. If there is, we'll go ahead and take some joints. Now, this is a visual, right? You don't do a pressure test no. or anything? Yeah, just a visual. We can only get to so much duct work in the mechanic room if like, the basement's finished. So we're not going to do like a whole house if we can't. But if we can, we're happy to do that. Cool. Make sure it's, it's uh, sealed up. Earlier, we were talking about the blower motor with the amp draws. Ductwork can affect that. If your ductwork is too small for the blower, this will tell us if it is. And that's just a pressure reading inside the ductwork. We have little meters that we put inside there, a special meter, and it'll tell us where you're at. If you're too high, too low, not going to be too low. That just doesn't happen. Gotcha. So too high is what we see a lot of times, and that's going to cause some problems. Uh, on the high-efficient furnaces, we're going to flush the drain. That's going to be just a lot of time in the summer you get a bunch of dirt and debris and dust build up in the exhaust pipes and when it turns on for the first time of the year all that dirt kind of slopes back towards the furnace and can plug the drain lines we want to flush that out for you and then if you have a condensation pump what that is it's a little pump on the side of the furnace if you don't have a drain down your furnace like for a high efficient it'll pump the water outside we'll test that and make sure it's working properly gotcha um so when you go through these things um what do they do once what's the technician do once he's gone through all of these steps they'll take notes and if there's anything outside of the manufacturer's recommendations we're going to sit down and just go over and say hey you know these are some potential problems with the furnace you know before they break we want to take care of them now and we'll give you some pricing at that point gotcha um kevin you were you were actually telling a story uh you know something that happened to dustin uh recently um T- tell me that story again, because I think it applies since we're talking about this these annual services. Do you know I'm, what I'm talking about? No, I'm not sure. Are you talking about the him having those people come out to his house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Unless you know another more relevant like, no, experience. No, it's it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite relevant. So he had uh, a company come out um just to see how they did things you know Mm -hmm. and um essentially what they did they they came in holding a screwdriver and some wet wipes in their hand and uh, essentially they opened it up wiped things out and used a vacuum i believe and uh, just vacuumed really quick what they could get and that was the extent of their of their Mm tune-up they didn't have any technical equipment they didn't have any anything else um and uh they they did that on a few of his furnaces he's got a couple of furnaces you know went through and did it on all of them and at the end that was it they said okay we're done goodbye (laughs) didn't give them any any like indication of the condition of the furnaces didn't nothing no it was it was kind of uh it was kind of surprising did they leave a copy of the report or anything there was no report hmm yeah so if you are having 
one of these annual maintenances done. I mean, one of the things that people, I hear people talk about is like, well, how much are you actually doing? And, you know, aside from some cleaning, some adjusting, you know, different things like that, one of the biggest reasons to have the tune-up done is is for that peace of mind, that safety. You're you're testing the how things are going and you're trying to get an early warning sign so that things don't break down prematurely and so that it is, you know, burning the gas properly and things like that. And so a big function of having this done is for you to understand and know the condition of your system. And so getting some type of progress report or report card uh, on the condition of your system, you need to have that information so that you can make decisions at that point of what you want to do to either, you know, help it run better or just let it keep going the way that it is. Um, how long does this take uh, to go through and do this, uh, this service? Uh, you're probably about an hour and a half, two hours. Really? Yeah. It depends on how hard it is to pull the blower motor and inspect the heat exchanger. That's probably the biggest unknown variable because some of them are really tricky. Gotcha. That's going to be the, the biggest unknown. Gotcha. Well, um, any, any last thoughts on these tune-ups or these annual maintenances? Do you, do you do them yourself at your house? Yes. Yes. Okay. But believe it or not. <laughs> Mine's already done. I've already gone through mine. I'm, I'm ready. I don't like the cold. I don't want mine breaking. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't usually do this on the podcast, but if you live in Utah and you are in our service area, so from you know North Ogden down to Nephi to Willa over to Park City, and you're a homeowner and you're listening and you want to have this service done, this thing where we go through the system top to bottom, check all the vital components, make sure everything's running safely, where we document all of our findings and you know educate you on the condition of your system and what your options are if you want it to perform better. This, this, this service that takes two hours to go through and do, normally we charge $99 to do this service. It's well worth it at that. Uh, but if you are listening to the podcast, if you call into our office and you mention the podcast, you don't have to tell us what show you're watching. Just mention the podcast and say that you want to you know, have your furnace tuned up. We'll actually uh, give you a podcast special, 70 bucks off. Instead of paying $99, we'll do it for 29 bucks. We'll come out, we'll do, and even though it's a discounted tune-up, you're not getting a discounted tune-up. It's the full blown, you know, come out there and make sure everything is is working properly. And we'll leave you with a written report so that you know the condition of it. Yeah, it'll be emailed. And to email it? Yeah, uh, the, it'll be just emailed. <sighs> oh, just emailed. Yeah, just emailed. We've moved over to, what is it? Paperless? Paperless? Yes. Woo. So if you don't have an email, just ask my technician and we will mail you a copy if you don't have an email. Nice. Emails. Speaking of emails. No, I'm just kidding. That's the show. <laughs> <laughs> Any last thoughts? Oh, thanks for having me. All right. Well, yeah. we'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode of In the House. If you'd like to know more about Any Hour Services, visit anyhourservices.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to In the House. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>